Hallo zusammen zu Irisch Gut, zu den Stories und Tipps von der Grünen Insel, dem Podcast von Tourism Island. Heute besuchen wir einen Ort in Dublin, der Musikgeschichte geschrieben hat. Und zwar nicht nur irische. Der Ort, an dem wir heute sind, der ist ein gutes Stück weit dafür verantwortlich, wie die Pop- und Rockmusik auf der ganzen Welt klingt. Und das bereits seit mehreren Jahrzehnten. Die Windmill Lane Studios in der Dubliner Rings and Road, die gehören zu den vier, fünf berühmtesten Aufnahmestudios überhaupt. Und ich garantiere euch, auch ihr habt mindestens ein Lieblingsalbum oder einen Lieblingssong, der hier aufgenommen oder zumindest abgemischt worden ist. Ich nenne nur schon mal schnell ein paar Namen, damit ihr so eine Ahnung davon bekommt, von welcher Liga wir hier reden. Ed Sheeran, Lady Gaga, David Bowie, Miley Cyrus, Bruce Springsteen, die Rolling Stones und vor allem U2. Mit denen hat quasi alles begonnen, aber dazu gleich noch viel mehr, wenn wir da unterwegs sind in den Studios. Und auch das hier ist noch ganz wichtig, das kann jeder. Also jeder, der möchte, kann bei seinem nächsten Besuch in Dublin eine Tour durch die Windmill Lane Studios buchen. Und ich kann euch versprechen, das ist werdet ihr so schnell nicht vergessen. Hier kommt Irisch Gut. Stories und Tipps von der grünen Insel. Die legendären Aufnahmestudios liegen in der Nähe der Grand Canal Docks. Aiden Alcock ist einer der drei Besitzer. Und ich habe ihn gebeten, mich doch erst einmal genauso durch das Haus zu führen, wie alle anderen Besucher auch. So, this is Lab One. We call it, we, we, this is where we do an introduction to visitors. Uh -huh. And we explain the history of Wimmer Lane to the visitors. Because the history of Wimmer Lane goes back to 1978 in this room. And then we explain how a record studio operates and how it works and this is before the visitor goes to visit the different studios in the building and that way they can sort of appreciate it that little bit more because really it's a case of them going into the studio and seeing all the buttons seeing all the lights and it doesn't really mean anything unless you explain it a small bit and we break it up like that you know then we take them downstairs bring them into studio three which is our smallest studio. We have three studios here. When people do a tour of the building, they go into two studios. Our smallest, where we do all the mixing, and then upstairs in our largest studio, which is Studio One, which takes over the entire floor of this building here. Die Studios gibt es seit 1978. Damals befanden die sich noch in der Windmill Lane, daher auch der Name. Schon die ersten Bands, die hier aufgenommen haben, waren ziemlich bekannt, bzw. sogar berühmt. Planksty zum Beispiel, irische Folklegenden oder Status Quo, die haben hier zwei komplette Alben eingespielt. Wirklich berühmt aber wurden die Windmill Lane Studios, als eine Dubliner Band vorbeischaute, die später dann zu einer der größten der Welt werden sollte. U2 nämlich. Generally, studios become famous for their most famous client. Mm -hmm. So I would often say to them, you know, if I mention Abbey Road Studios, people automatically would say The Beatles. When people think of Wimmer Lane, they think of you too. But there's a plethora of other artists that come in here as well. And I think it really surprises a lot of people, the amount of artists that have been through our doors since 1978 and continue because it is a working studio. So we only hold tours when there's no clients in the studio. So you will it. not run into Ed Sheeran visiting your studio? Well, you know, we can't say yet, never, but you know, it has been known. It has been known <laughs> where we have done tours and certain people have popped up out of nowhere. I won't mention any names, but the people got an awful fright when they were going around <laughs> and then they realized that some, so, so, someone had forgotten their guitar <laughs> the, the next day and came back in to get it. You know what I mean? So that was a surprise for a lot of people, definitely. But I won't mention any names. 
<lacht> Aiden Alcock ist ein sehr bescheidener Studioboss, deswegen druckst er bei den Namen immer so ein bisschen herum. Ich habe vorhin ja schon mal so ein paar der Künstler erwähnt, die hier aufgenommen haben oder deren Songs hier abgemischt und bearbeitet wurden. Ich schiebe einfach noch mal ein paar Namen nach. Die Cranberries, ACDC, Metallica, Depeche Mode oder Oh My God, Kate Bush. Oh my God. Was hätte ich da gerne Mäuschen gespielt? Die beste Werbung für die Studios hat aber eine ganz andere Band gemacht. A band that is probably credited for bringing more artists to Wimmer Lane than any other is a band called the Chieftains. Now the Chieftains were Irish traditional musicians and they were headed up by a guy called Paddy Maloney. And Paddy was a great salesman. He sold himself very well. He sold a band very well. And they collaborated with everyone, which was brilliant for Wimmer Lane because they were bringing in the likes of all these different artists like Mark Knopfler. They, they collaborated with Van Morrison, Schneider, Connor, Blesser. The list just went on and on. They would collaborate with the Rolling Stones. They even Bork. went to China. To, to they did. That's yeah. right. On the, the, yeah. They were one of the yeah. first ever to, to play in China. To get the, those, the, the Roy Cooder, they did the Long, the long Black Veil was mm -hmm. the album they did here as well. And they Fantastic invited, album. They invited was, everybody. Was on, it recorded onto, here? And, and it was recorded here as well. Wow. Yeah. Marion Faithful was another Roy Mick Cooder. Jagger was Mick Jagger was here. That, he did the Rocky Road to Dublin right. on that, on that right. as well. Sinead yeah. O'Connor. Sinead O'Connor was on it she as well. Through the Fields. The Walk Through the Fair. Fair. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Very yeah. Famous yeah, track. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. Without a doubt. Also das ist tatsächlich ein ganz fantastisches Album, das ich jetzt gleich mal einfach wärmstens empfehle, auch weil es eben hier aufgenommen worden ist. Die Chieftains mit The Long Black Whale. Das sind atemberaubende Versionen berühmter irischer Klassiker drauf, interpretiert von den ganz Großen der Pop- und Rockmusik. Da müsst ihr unbedingt mal reinhören. Als nächstes hat Aiden mir ein paar Sachen gezeigt, die man in dem Studio so machen kann. Zum Beispiel mit der Stimme eines Sängers. Der steht ja auf der einen Seite der Glasscheibe und singt ins Mikrofon, klar. Aber wie sich das dann später anhören wird, das hat der Tontechniker am Mischpult auf der anderen Seite der Glasscheibe in der Hand. Und der hat da ziemlich viele Möglichkeiten. One, two, one, two. Did you ever see this film Star Wars? Of course, and yes. When, and he goes, Luke, I am your father. Can you do that bit, bit for me? And if I just change that around, give it a... <laughs> Luke Skywalker, I am your father. <laughs> <laughs> Or we could pitch shift it a slight bit as well if we give the same line. Look, I am your father. Also, ihr bekommt da ganz schnell eine Idee davon, was da alles möglich ist mit Stimmen und natürlich auch mit Instrumenten. Und was auch ganz schnell klar wird, die Soundleute in den Windmill Lane Studios, die müssen die Gabe haben, sich Sounds und Klänge in ihrem Kopf vorstellen zu können, bevor die noch irgendwer überhaupt gespielt hat. So, the sound engineer has to be much more than... A Technician. He has to oh, have yeah. the vision yeah, and yeah, 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 he yeah. has to have the ability to, Or to <laughs> hear something that isn't there yet. Absolutely. They, like, they will have a vision of how they think it should sound. The engineer plays a huge role in all of that because sometimes they can come up with the ideas for the producer, for the band. But it's all about experimenting as well. Bands love experimenting and they love engineers and producers that experiment. And then you have these producers who have the vision of cutting off everything and reducing the sound like Rick Rubin, for example, yes. did with Johnny Cash. Yes. So you put everything away but the bare, raw Johnny Cash yes. wounded soul. And right? it worked, you know, it did. It really, it really worked, you know, for all the work that he did on, on those particular tracks. But you have to say, Johnny Cash also had a huge career behind him in the first place. Mm -hmm. He sold the songs very, very well. His voice 
might mightn't have been perfect at the time, but you know, it goes to show you that if you have something at the at the core uh, of the idea to begin with, it it stays regardless of how polished it might be. Als U2 damals mit ihren Alben Achtung Baby und Zuropa der Popmusik Anfang der 90er Jahre völlig neue Türen geöffnet haben und sich herumgesprochen hat, dass das alles in einem Studio in Dublin aufgenommen worden war, da wollte dann plötzlich jeder in die Windmill Lane Studios. Und wenn man heute mit Aiden durch die Gänge läuft, dann läuft man permanent an goldenen Schallplatten vorbei, die da überall an den Wänden hängen. Then you have Octon Baby, you know, which is yeah. a real seminal album then as well. And again, you know, that was a band, there was a band really experimenting with, with, with sounds. And just, you know, because I remember when that first came out, I don't know if, like, in 1991, everyone was just scratching their head going, oh my yeah. God, what, what they do, do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, yeah. The, but they're, the, they're the albums that are the, the I feel, the, 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 are the best albums going because... Yeah. They're the growers. They're the yeah. ones you'll always go back and listen yeah. to, you know? Yeah. The ones you'll like instantly, the songs you'll like instantly, are the ones you'll probably get fed up with. Noch ein bisschen stolzer als auf all die Preise und Auszeichnungen ist man in den Windmill Lane Studios übrigens auf eine riesengroße weiße Wand mit sehr, sehr vielen schwarzen Edding-Unterschriften. This wall here, all the different artists. That recording studio one, we get them to sign the wall. All right. Started with Ed Sheeran. And he says, here, thanks for letting me be the first to sign the wall. Is that Bruce Springsteen's autograph here? That's it, yeah. That's it. And that's his self-painted guitar. That's his self-painted guitar. <laughs> here on this wall is our Grammy wall. And you could see here, Wimmer Lane Recording Studios, All That You Can't Leave Behind, U2, Best Rock Album. Then you have... Beautiful Day, U2, record, record of the year. Then you have U2, Zeropa, Best Alternative Music Album. Wow. Now, to be honest, we could have filled the whole wall okay. with U2, so we just stopped it there, right for a bit. Eines der Aufnahmestudios ist übrigens derart groß, dass man da ein 80-köpfiges Orchester unterbringen kann. Was kaum jemand weiß, hier werden auch Filmmusiken aufgenommen. Und das auch schon ein bisschen länger. Schon der berühmte Soundtrack-Komponist Elmer Bernstein hat hier gearbeitet. And Elmer Bernstein was a hugely famous composer in the, in the States. He'd done the, the music for the likes of The Magnificent Seven. If you ever listen to the music for the, the Western, they're epic, you know. Um, but here, in, that's it, yeah, it was brilliant, yeah. So here he would have done the music for My Left Foot. He would have done music for a film with Martin Sheen and called Da. He did another film for River Runs Through It with Brad Pitt. And that was a Robert Redford film then as well. But other films that were done here, because we, we, because we can hold an 80-piece orchestra, was the likes of The Talent of Mr. Ripley, and The Mask with Jim Carrey, Hold Me, Kiss Me, Trill Me with, with Batman for You Too was done here. And uh, the theme music to Mission Impossible was done here as well. I only heard this re recently, but if you know the music for Mission Impossible, It goes dun 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 dun. Well, that rhythm is Morse code dun 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 for M and I. Ha, auch Filmfans lernen noch was bei einem Besuch in diesen Studios. Ich wollte dann natürlich auch wissen, welche Band denn eigentlich die längste Zeit hier verbracht hat. Und Aiden hat sofort geantwortet. Die Stones. Als die in den 90ern ihr Album Voodoo Lounge aufgenommen haben, haben die sich für ein ganzes halbes Jahr hier einquartiert. In true Rolling Stones fashion, they took over the entire building, all three studios, for six months to record that album, do you know? When you, we walk down the staircase, that's where Charlie Watts put his drum kit to experiment with the sound. Remember I was saying about experimenting with the sound? Then they hung the microphones off the lights in the mm -hmm. stairwell mm -hmm. and then fed it into the mixing console upstairs. And the rest of the band couldn't actually believe And when you think of it, they were here for six months, whereas their last album, 
they spent three and a half weeks in the studio to do it. And I suppose that they would have done a lot of pre-production work on the likes of computers at home, you know, mm. because the, the computers en- enable the artist to to move and record yeah. at the same time. And that's that's what tends to happen quite a lot now. Um, mm. The artist is recording while they tour. The They're Stones gonna... might have been quick at this time because Charlie is not with them anymore. Well, th- this is, well maybe that's the case, but I'd say quite often that the technology is there but they're probably writing the album in the studio at the yeah. same time and that's really unheard of as well yeah. but they would have known then that they were going to sell so many million albums oh, yeah. you know yeah, back yeah. then times as have well. changed of course. times yeah. have changed yeah. exactly yeah. you know so whenever a band as big as the rolling stones enters the building is there something like Uh, relationship building up between oh, yeah. the guys working here and the band. Oh yeah, without a doubt. You know what I mean. Half they were, they work they work very closely together. You know, mm-hmm. and there has been an element of trust in there as well. But generally, when they go into studios with like open stairs in Studio One, they just close the, the door, and that's mm-hmm. that's them. And no one then bothers them. You know what mm-hmm. I mean. And that's the idea. They that they, they want to escape everyone and anyone. Then you know. The one thing that all these top artists have is a very, very strong work ethic. You know, mm-hmm. you know, they they don't see it as being work. That's mm-hmm. what I find. Um, they have no problems of going to do a gig and coming back into the studio later on that evening and keep working throughout the night. They just feel as though they're born to do it, and that's what they do. Und genau deswegen sind gute Musiker eben auch so gut, weil sie sehr, sehr hart arbeiten für ihr Geld. Genau wie das Team in den Studios natürlich auch. Wenn man als Studio erfolgreich sein möchte, wenn man will, dass Musiker und Musikerinnen und Bands gerne zu einem kommen und sich vor allem wohlfühlen, dann ist die Technik gar nicht mal so wichtig. Es sind vielmehr die Leute in der Regie und die vielen, vielen Helfer drumherum hinter den Kulissen, die darüber entscheiden, ob man erfolgreich wird oder eben nicht. But really we would like to tilt a cap to all the people behind the scenes. Like there's not very much I c- more I can tell people about Bono than he hasn't told everyone else on, in, in his books or, you know, and also of course we have a privacy thing here as well that a client's, you know, privacy when they use the studio is, is sacrament. And um, really what it boils down to, Stefan, is the people. It's not the equipment in which we have in the studio, the history that goes back, which is fantastic. But the artists hone in on the, the people because they want the best sound engineer, they want the best producers, they want the best arrangers, the best conductors, the best mixing engineers, the best mastering engineers. And they can all be found in this building then as well, you know. The client is constantly looking for the, the best person at doing this, the best person at doing that. And they, you know, And that's, the, 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 I suppose, part of the formula of get, get finding yourself a hit. You know, if you're looking to, to find, you know, to become a chart-topping artist, you probably would need a chart-topping producer to do that particular job as well. They, they know the formula on, what, on, on how to compose these tracks together to make it work. Today, what tends to happen is, like, you know, I mean, if you're, if you're say, for instance, an example would be mixing a track, you could spend a day mixing you can spend a week mixing a month mixing and I've heard of mixes going on for a couple of months but really the more that you do it the, the worse it probably is going to get you know <laughs> and that's what I explain to people who do tours with us here you're striving for absolute perfection yeah. and perhaps the perfection isn't always going to be there all the time yeah. you know and you're not going to please all your audience at the same time either so you just need to move on and a bit like an artist adding you know paint to a canvas when did they know that the painting is finished if they keep at it they're going to make it worse and mixing can be the same sort right. of process as well you know ah yeah am Ende einer jeden Führung hat man als Besucher dann auch die Möglichkeit, sich selbst mal an so ein Mischpult zu setzen und ein bisschen herumzuspielen. Und das ist dann tatsächlich noch mal ein absolutes Highlight eines Besuchs. Press the fader down at the end, hold that down and press it up to the green light. Now you can hear the kick drum. We have isolated just that sound on the kick drum that is there. Okay. Okay. Press the next fader and bring it up. There's the microphone on the snare, right? That's right. Okay. So the next two faders together, the next two faders get not all the way up, about three quarters of the way up to the about here. Bring them up. So I'll just bring that back a small bit so you can hear it. Hear the reverb. 
And that's natural reverb. You can push that up a small bit more if you like. But a small movement makes a big difference. Yeah. It really does. Now, the next one is just percussion. You can bring that up. It's just a bit of cowbell. Bring it, up. Bring it back down a small bit. We it's need more good. cowbells. Bring up, exactly. Bring up the bass. Next one. And drive that up to the green light now. So then what we do is we introduce you to the full band. Here are those two faders. Back it off a small bit. Right there. Perfect. These two. Bring it up. Here's the vocal. Hey Joe, why'd you have to go? Because we're on the the effects. The distortion on his yeah. voice. Hey Joe, why'd you have to go? Cause we only wanna say hello. Get the idea? She's layered five yeah. times. Why'd you have Back to it up. leave me? Why you had to leave me? Ja, weil auch die interessanteste Führung irgendwann dann leider einmal zu Ende ist. Irisch gut. Stories und Tipps von der grünen Insel. Hey Joe, why'd you have to go? Cause we only wanna say hello. Wenn ihr das noch nicht gemacht habt und noch nicht in den Windmill Lane Studios vorbeigeschaut habt, dann setzt es unbedingt auf die Liste für euren nächsten Dublin-Besuch. Ich hatte da echt einen ganz tollen Nachmittag. Alle wichtigen Infos stehen wie immer in unseren Shownotes und alle Folgen von Irisch Gut gibt es auf dem YouTube-Kanal von Entdecke Irland und alle natürlich auch bei Spotify, bei Apple Music und all den anderen. Und vielleicht seid ihr ja dann auch beim nächsten Mal wieder mit dabei. Cheers und bis ganz bald. Hey Joe, 